So uh, a couple of housekeeping issues regarding this uh, this webinar and how to grow your MSP revenue. Uh, all of you are mute at the present time, and what you're able to do is go into the webinar screen control area and ask a question uh, in the question panel. And then toward the end of the session, we'll be answering questions that uh, will be that you present uh, or pose during the webinar, and we'll record this webinar as well and uh, replay it and have a replay made available to you shortly so you can share this information with your colleagues. Um, so uh, the other the other uh, housekeeping item is polling questions. We have three polling questions that we'll ask. Uh, one uh, we'll ask after I finish my presentation, and then the second we'll ask after uh, Nicole completes her uh, RMM uh, uh, presentation, and then we'll ask one at the end before we take uh, Q and A. Um, so so that's it. Uh, let's get started. So, well, we'll start off by, by um, talking about who Komodo is. Uh, some of you may know who we are, some of you may not, but uh, we're basically um, have uh, was started uh, in uh, 1997, and uh, is we are a leading uh, SSL certification uh, vendor. We also have a complete portfolio across 80 products, and here's a snapshot of. Um, just some of them in, in various product categories. Uh, as mentioned, we are a leader in SSL certificate authorities. We have over a third of the marketplace right now, and our share has been continuing to grow. So what to expect from the webinar? Well, you'll once you learn how to use these modules, you can simplify your service delivery with a one-view dashboard. Uh, and uh, you'll have other advantages associated with cloud-based or SaaS-based uh, solutions. Uh, because you have a, a, a single view uh, and a single platform, you, uh, you have uh, real-time data that's made available to you for decision-making. And so uh, we hope that uh, you'll use this webinar to uh, learn how to deploy and manage these two modules, uh, which, by the way, are free modules, and we will continue to remain free on this Komodo One uh, cloud platform. And again, because this is a technical webinar, please be sure to ask plenty of technical questions, and we'll try to get to every question uh, uh, after Nicole finishes her presentation. So what is the value to you? Well, again, uh, as a cloud-based platform, we offer a single system of record uh, for unified and transparent Verbal data, and you'll see that in the RMN Council. Uh, also, um, will if you're using any complex or, or are you doing any manual task or have multiple systems that you're dealing with right now, this is a way for you to basically automate or standardize the automation process uh, into uh, tasks that are repeatable, secure, and compliant. Uh, so you can help, so you can better manage your operations and also help your customers. Uh, uh, speed their service remediation or speed remediation and also re speed their service assurance. Uh, and finally, least, last but not least, it's free. This is uh, completely free modules, the RMM and the, uh, and the patch manager. We also have a free service desk as well. And again, these three modules will continue to remain free indefinitely. We also have other products on the Komodo One Cloud, uh, including a, um, a Komodo Device Manager for mobile device management and endpoint security management. Uh, that is for fee, but there is a free trial associated with that. We also have a app store as well, uh, where we have uh, partner applications uh, we also have an application for uh, security information event management as well that we'll be offering and actually efficiently launching next week. We have a consortium. We encourage you to, to join it to, to, to um, access free tools. Uh, we have uh, uh, an MSP forum that's set up. Uh, so you can join in on discussions and uh, pose questions and gain support from uh, fellow MSPs and other te technical um uh, uh, personnel. Uh, so again, we we uh, you know adding Komodo security products and solutions seamlessly to your platform is 
what we're referring to by our security information event management product that's up on the uh, application store. So more useful links, and again, uh, no need to copy this down because we'll be recording this and sending this to you to share with your colleagues after this present, after recording, shortly after recording. So here are some key links uh, with information. We actually have an existing webinar up on Komodo TV. That's the link to that. Uh, and here's your Komodo One support contacts with telephone numbers, email addresses. Here's my contact information is in product marketing and. Nicole Whalen and Ilkar Simpser are the uh, are the technical uh, experts, technical support for Nicole and uh, Ilkar is our uh, product manager. So, also as mentioned earlier, we're launching a new uh, service uh, security information event management uh, product called uh, Komodo uh, NextSim Cloud Solution, and uh, we we will have be hosting a webinar on October 1st to tell you more about this uh, cloud-based module that will be uh, added to the Komodo One platform. So with that, let's turn it over to Nicole to get into the heart of this presentation, which is the training session. Yes, uh, but before we do that, let's, uh, let's start with a polling question. So, uh, hopefully we're giving you time to answer this. Just a few more seconds. Okay, I think we have a uh, quorum. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this now, and I'll turn this over to Nicole. Okay, thank you so much, Tom. Let me go ahead and show everyone my screen here. All right, and once again, welcome to the Komodo One live presentation. I'm going to go through a couple modules today uh, and just explain a, a few things. And again, today we're only going to be discussing two of the modules, which is the patch management and the RMM, but I'll give you a brief overview of the entire Komodo One platform. So, so first we're going to begin today at one.komodo.com. And actually, let me back up here so that you can see the screen that you will originally get. Here is where you can, of course, sign up to get it for free or log in. As you can see, we also have links to contact us and to join the MSP consortium. So one.comoter.com is where you would go to either get it for free or to log in. And once you log in, to the Komodo One platform, you're going to see a dashboard view. This is, a, this is the most pertinent information that we've gleaned from the active modules. So right now, as you can see, we have quite a few uh, graphical representations as well as some statistical breakdown. You can change it to your individual companies or have a general overview of your network. As you can see, we have ticket status from Service Desk, available patches from your patch manager, as well as your operating systems. We have your activity status, if they've been online or offline and for how long, as well as a policy status to see how many applied and failed policies that you currently have running that might need to be remediated. Finally, if you come down to the bottom here, you'll see every company that you are currently monitoring and a nice breakdown of the number of online devices, offline, patches applied and failed, optional and critical. So again, this is a great overview of the network that you're monitoring. You can break it down by individual company or all over. And since this is off of the one.komodo.com platform, you can access this website anywhere. So now that we've reviewed the dashboard just a little bit, let me take you through some of the other components of the Komodo One platform. First thing I want to draw your attention to is actually the bottom left-hand side here. You have both the Help button, and this gives you access to the consortium, the help documents, and of course, the Komodo Enterprise Forum. 
Now, as Tom had mentioned, we have two forums. One is for MSB Consortium, which can give you some good business ideas and a chance to interact with fellow MSPs. The Komodo Enterprise Forum also gives you a way to share your experience about the Komodo One product. We're always looking for new ideas and new features that we can add. And in fact, we've even given you a place on the forum to vote for features that have already been requested. And the more votes that we get for a particular feature, we know to make it a higher priority. So I encourage everyone to go to register at the Enterprise Forum and vote on the favorite features that you would like to see on the new, next upcoming releases. So going back to the one.comoda.com dashboard, we saw the dashboard view. Here we have access to the modules. Again, we have the service desk module. That is our ticketing system. This is 100% web-based. And we give you views for both your administration and your staff. Um, the service desk is a, a basic ticketing system. Uh, we make it extremely customizable. We offer asset level reporting as well as cost-based reporting. We offer a knowledge base and canned responses. And finally, we do offer four ways to open a ticket. Um, two of them are going to be through the user, either through a URL or through an email. You can also open a new ticket within the service desk module. And finally, any alarms triggered by the RMM remote monitoring tool can also be set to, uh, to open a ticket in the service desk. Patch management, we will of course review in greater detail later on in the presentation. And that does exactly what it sounds like. It will manage all the required patches as well as custom patches for your monitored network. And it will help you deploy them as well as set scheduled releases for deployment. We have here the Komodo Remote Monitoring and Management Tool. This is our most complex remote monitoring and management tool. There are three components of the tool, which I will get to. Um, but this is exactly what you are going to use to observe, track, and report eventually on your monitored endpoints. These three modules, the Service Desk Patch Manager and the Remote Monitoring, will always remain free as part of the Komodo One platform. Now, as you can see, we have a, a fourth module right here for the Komodo Device Manager. And that is our platform, which allows you to support um, your mobile devices. Uh, in fact, it even comes with an antivirus feature right now um, for the Komodo Device Management Program. Uh, this is something that you can try for free or buy through the App Store located on the left-hand side of the Komodo One portal. So let me go ahead and bring up the App Store. And uh, as you can see, we will have, let me refresh the page here. And this is going to show you featured modules that we currently have. Uh, many, again, you can try for free and see if you like them, such as our, our uh, threat management tool. We have our anti-spam gateway, our Kuru Mail, and as Tom had mentioned, we have our umbrella platform, the MSSP platform, which we are rebranding and will come out with in our next uh, presentation on October 1st with more detail. But as soon as you, we do have more modules in here, one of them including the Komodo Device Manager, once you choose a module from the available modules, you will instantly see it placed within the available module store. Now the beauty of the overall Komodo One module is that we assist the MSPs with management. We understand that you're managing multiple companies and organization is very key. So that's why we've included on the left hand side a management feature where you can enter in your new company information, those that you are managing, from the platform itself. Any information entered under this company information will then be automatically available 
to all of the modules listed on your module view. So any company in here is automatically available to the device manager, the RMM patch management, and service desk tool. The final thing I just wanted to uh, bring your attention to is this nice little V1.4 that is the current version that we're running now. And if you click on that, you can see our release notes for previous releases. Again, we started this in April. So as you can see, we've added in quite a few features as well as resolved quite a few bug fixes. Again, please do not hesitate to contact our support department. We really do want to hear from you if you're having any issues uh, or again, if you have any feature improvements that you would like to see in our upcoming releases. So now I'm going to go ahead and start by going into the Komodo Remote Monitoring and Management tool. Simply by clicking on the module, you will open up the web-based view. Now, as I had mentioned, the RMM tool is fairly elaborate, and it does consist of three components. The first component is what you're viewing here, which is the web-based view. Uh, we've continually added features to this web-based view to make it much more user-friendly and offer additional information. For example, as you can see, we have the devices set up so that you can manage them based on the overall company. Within each company, you can also have sites. And this allows for much easier organization and viewing. You can also click on any endpoint that you're currently managing and you'll see a lot of pre-populated information. Now, one of the things that sets us apart from our competitors is that we do offer real-time system information. So occasionally it may take a moment to load, but you can guarantee that this is real-time information, nothing that has been saved or cached. So for example, for this particular endpoint here, I can see some of the device information system information, and actually let me give you one here that is available. Uh, unavailable simply means that the computer is for some reason not on the network. So let me go to one here that is, and as you can see again, this is the system inventory. We have a system overview, operating, hardware, and network. You can see we've even included some good information like the serial number for the operating system as well as network interface controllers, disk drives, and of course, your memory slots. You can also look on session information and see who exactly has connected with this endpoint, and when, and what exactly was done. So for example, on this particular endpoint that I've connected to, it looks like I was the last person here and I performed a uh, just an, an intervention. It looked basically nothing was run, so it looks like I just looked at it and then left. But again, it will record all the system information for auditing purposes. And then finally, as we reviewed, the device information. Also available on the web based is the ability to add a device. Um, this is only to add a singular device and again this is going to allow you to add either the RMM agent or add the RMM and patch manager agent to your endpoint at the same time. So you would simply click on the add a device, select your company that you had set up from the Komodo One platform, select a site, and then generate your code. Here you can either go here and enter the code below or simply download the .msi or .exe file. This is one way to add a singular device from the web interface. Let me go ahead though and show you the second component of the interface of the RMM tool, which is the downloaded administrative console. So as you can see on the left hand side here, we have a menu called Download. 
And this again will download the second component, which is the administrative console. You can either do it for 32-bit, 64-bit, and we also have a remote portable version that you can download as well. So once you download and run, let me go ahead and open my version. You're going to get an icon such as this now on your desktop. And when you launch it, you will get the administrative console. Now this is the main console that you're going to use chiefly um, to not only add your devices, but also to set policies, to set procedures, and run jobs. So let me review each menu individually so that we can get an overall feel for the RMM tool. So now the first menu we come to is the devices menu. And as you saw, we also had the ability to add a device from the web console. However, add through the web view, excuse me. But here, we give you many more options to add a device through the console. This is also where you can generate a MSI file that you can use to deploy through group policy in Active Directory and enroll multiple endpoints at once. So simply click the Add Device and you'll be brought with this wizard. Select the company name, again, which you've added through the Komodo One platform. And here is where you can either select a site or add a site if not already added. Simply select the OS name, which defaulted to Windows here. Leave it on Auto Detect. We do offer a description. This is an optional description, and we suggest that if you are going to use this for bulk deployment, you do not put anything in the description field, as then everything that you've deployed this to, every endpoint will contain the same description. So once you've set up the settings, you need to decide exactly what enrollment method you would choose to use. So we have an enrollment link here that you can generate. And this is an EXE file, and this is going to be for both the RMM and Patch Manager tool. If you prefer, you can download just the RMM software. And again, this is going to create the .msi file that you can deploy through group policy. We also give you the ability to just put in an email, and we will send you the software uh, to that email, and this will again enroll your endpoint in both RMM and patch. And finally, we have a code. You can generate this enrollment code, give it to your end user, and simply direct them to this location, and they can enroll their endpoint themselves. Once you have enrolled the software on the endpoint, it will instantly be visible within the device's view of the console. Now as you can see we have a few different ways to sort this information. Right now I have it all listed by company, site, and host name. But you can simply click up here and have the tree structure that many people are much more familiar with so that you can expand and collapse your sites or your companies for easy sorting and again easy management. So now that we've reviewed how to add in an endpoint and how to view some of the information on that endpoint, let's go ahead and see how we can take the endpoint over and troubleshoot it if needed. So as you can see, we have under Actions on your device menu, we have either Takeover or Unavailable. Again, unavailable means that for some reason this endpoint is no longer associated to the network. Uh, perhaps it's logged off. Uh, perhaps it is just completely powered down. Uh, once it is available, you will see it again on the endpoint view, and you will have takeover next to it. Anything that you see with takeover means you can generate a session. So simply click on this takeover button and you're going to be prompted, which I've already done, with this window. And you'll see in your sessions view here that I'm actually already in session with this endpoint. 
So going back to it, this is our tool that you can use to remote into it and again remediate any issues. We offer quite a few deployment tools that you can use. We also offer the ability to transfer this to another agent who can also remedy the issues or perhaps transfer it back in queue so that somebody else can pick up the session and continue where the previous session ran off. We also give you the ability to run a procedure. Now I'll review procedures in a moment, but a procedure is something that you have written and saved to run on particular endpoints. Uh, we give you this handy view so that you can instantly run it from this menu without having to go into the procedures menu. Finally, I'm going to click off that here, we have all of our deployment tools on the left hand drop down box. Now these are preloaded tools for you to use. Again, we are always looking for new tools to include. Um, however, these are quite robust. Um, some of them are similar to competitors, some of them are different, but once again, we're always giving you real-time information, and that is a key when you're trying to remediate issues. So let's start by going through a couple of the tools that we offer. The first one is the System Inventory Tool, and this is, of course, going to retrieve your hardware and software resources on the endpoint. Uh, you can determine cat compatibility of the hardware with the operating systems and identify any changes that might be needed if the problem does develop. You can see here we even have last user login name, information, everything that you may need to give you a better picture of what's going on. Remote desktop is a pretty self-explanatory tool. Um, this will allow you to uh, to go in and uh, take over the remote into the computer. Um, you'll be able to see the desktop as you saw from this one. It looks like we have the uh, somebody has logged out of it right now. The Active Connections Manager. This is a high performance solution for you to view all currently active connections. So this includes applications, processes, and services. And you also are able to terminate any unsafe processes running on the endpoint. For example, you can see the RMM tool right now is running. Let's see if I can see anything here that uh, looks like it shouldn't be running. It looks like this is pretty good. Um, but as you can see, we give you an easy way to kill the process. And at any time, you can refresh and get and double check and make sure your information is current. The Auto Runs Manager allows you again to view the startup items which are loaded when the system boots up. This way you can uh, can any unnecessary startup items that can hog system resources which leads to sluggishness. So here's one here for the RMM you see starts and we also have our CDM agent and our internet security within our startup programs. At any time you just click on it and remove it and it will be removed from the endpoints startup. The browser add-on manager, it looks like the browser is open right now, uh, but this will enable you to identify browser add-ons and again you can remove any unsafe or malicious ones. Our file transfer is unique in that it allows a two-way transfer. So not only can you push to the endpoint on this side, but you can actually pull as well into yours. Power Manager is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it allows you to uh, restart, shut down. You can even restart in safe mode. The Process Explorer, now this is an advanced system monitoring tool Again, you can quickly identify, monitor, and terminate any unsafe processes that are running. Now, this will actually show all running processes, even those triggered by malware and those that were invisible or those that are hidden. This way, the administrator can simply identify which of these processes are unsafe and shut them down with a single click. If you can also see on the right-hand side, 
This is a list of dependencies so that you can see exactly the dependencies on each of these processes as well. Additional tools include the hardware monitoring tool. Uh, the shell execute was it's extremely important. Um, the system cleaner and I think the systems restore, which are all fairly self-explanatory. So within these tools, you'll be able to troubleshoot and remediate most of your issues. If it's a known issue, you can simply come over here and run a procedure that you've already created. When you finish with the session, you would simply click End, close the session. As you can see, it is no longer in our sessions window. However, if I go back to our main view, you can see that I can still take it back over if needed. So that is how we initiate a session. Let's continue on now and review some of the other features of the RMM tool. Next, let's investigate procedures. Now, procedures are a list of um, actually deployment opportunity things that you can deploy to run directly on endpoints or you can bundle a procedure and create a job which you can execute on the endpoints as well. It is from this interface where you would create a new procedure. You'd simply select a series of actions with defined parameters to be performed in sequence. You can then run this procedure ad hoc on any endpoint like we just saw in the sessions window or you can use this while creating a job to be executed on a specific or multiple endpoints. Now when you first get your RMM console downloaded, this will of course be empty. However, creating a new procedure is very easy because we give you this wonderful creation scripting wizard. Uh, we all know that writing lengthy scripting can be not only tedious, um, but easy to um, fraught with, uh, you know, you don't always get it right, you don't always write something right, and you're sitting here troubleshooting, figuring out what went wrong with the scripting. Well, we're trying to save you some steps here, and we've given you this scripting wizard. So, for example, say that you want to create a procedure to install an application. Pretty easy. So the first thing you're probably going to want to do is create a system restore point. So you would just simply give it a name, fill in the information, and this will create a restore point. Second thing you want to do is install the application. So simply add the application installer into the list of actions to be performed. Enter in the pertinent information. Here's the uh, command line parameters and any cancel setup command if required. Then we're going to most likely need to run the power manager and restart the endpoint after installing the application. So you simply add the power manager feature, select restart, and now that's added in sequence. Finally, you probably would like to run the program. So that's when you can add in your shell execute, enter the process name and parameters, and run your application. Simply give this a name, click save, and I don't believe this is going to work because I didn't enter in any information. Nope. But simply enter in your information. You now have the sequence of events that you would like in order. Once you click save, it is then going to go to the, let me uh, apologize there, once you click Save, it's going to go to this, as you can see here, the Procedures window again. You click Save, it's going to be saved as one of these lists. You can now run the procedure. Simply click on Run Procedure. Click on the procedure that you just created. For example, here's one for Registry Clean. And then you can click on the devices that you would like to install this in. You can do either an individual endpoint. You can do it by site, or you can do it by company. So as you can see, when I clicked on Enterprise, all three sites were now included. Simply run the procedure, and that 
then you can come back here and click. Let's see that and see exactly what procedure you have written just to double check to make sure it's what you needed. For example, the registry cleaner here includes a system clean. The pig procedure here includes a shell execute. So you can double check if that's the correct procedure and then run it anytime from this menu. Well, what is a job then? A job is basically a collection of procedures that you've compiled to run on selected endpoints. You can create a new job by including existing procedures and then ex executing them at any time. Now this jobs interface here displays the jobs that have already been created and executed by all agents belonging to your MSP. So for example, if I click on this particular job, you can see who it was created by, who started it, that it is complete in the time, and then by expanding it, you can see the number of endpoints it was run on and the completion percentage. In order to create a new job, you simply go to Job Manager and from here you can not only run a job, but you can again also create as well. So let's go to Create. We'll enter in the job name. And as you can see, it is automatic populate, automatically populated with all the procedures that you have already created. So you can simply select the procedures which you would like to run. You can select the endpoints that you would like to run on it as well. Click Finish, and you will now have created a job. From there, you would simply go back to the jobs interface select on the job that you just created and check the status. Again, you can see how many endpoints it was run on and exactly what happened. Now that we've reviewed procedures and jobs and sessions, we now know how to go in we now know how to add a device to the RMM console, how to take it over and remotely remediate the issues, how to create and run a procedure such as shutdown, uh, ping, disk clean, and finally, how to bundle these procedures in order to create a job. The final aspect of the RMM tool is setting policies. Policies are a, basically it is a monitor around a variety, a variety of system parameters and events that if triggered will send an alert. This alert is viewable not only from the alerts interface, it is also viewable, let me go back here quickly, to the C1 dashboard. And from here you can see the alerts as well. Looks like my session expired over here. And how does one set up an alert? Well, we create a policy and when the policy is violated, it triggers an alert. So let's go ahead and create a policy. So we give you, again, quite a few monitors at your disposal that you can use. You can choose to bundle these monitors as well in one overall policy. So for example, say I would like to monitor, set up a monitor policy for failed login attempts that are equal to five or more. Let's say more than five. We can also add in another policy here for traffic monitor. And say if network usage is more than 80 percent for a period of more than 10 minutes to trigger an alert. We would simply give it a name and create it. As you can see now, we have the rule here, let me break it in, the five logins or more, as well as the network usage for more than 80% for more than 10 minutes. So now that we've created a policy, you would simply need to apply the policy. 
you can get that from the lower hand corner. Simply select the policy that you created and select the endpoints that you would like to deploy it on. Again, either by individual endpoint site or by overall company. Apply the policy and any time an alarm is triggered, it will send you an alert again to the alerts panel as well as the alerts on the Komodo One platform. Right now it looks like we're doing pretty well. I don't have any alerts on the current endpoints that we are monitoring. Uh, however, if you did see them here, you would simply click on it. You can run a procedure at this point as well. Once it is resolved, you would simply click on Fix and it will remove it from this menu. So let me refresh, make sure nothing got triggered in the interim. But that is the main feature of the RMM console. So now that we've reviewed that, I'm going to hand it over to Tom momentarily and he is going to review uh, and ask a, actually he's going to ask a polling question, I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and hand this over. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, so we're ready for our second, uh, our second polling question. I'll give you a few minutes and then we'll turn this back to Nicole. All right, thank you very much, Tom, and looks like we have access to my screen again. So I'm going to go back to the one.komodo.com platform. Now that we review the RMM tool pretty extensively, I'm going to go ahead and review the Patch Manager tool. Simply click on it and it's going to open the dashboard view. And starting on the upper right hand side, I just want to call your attention to the company dropdown. This is where you can individually select the customer that you would like the patch management information on. Now, just like the RMM tool, which required you to download a piece of software to the endpoint, the patch manager has this requirement as well. So up by your name, you can see that we have the ability to go to the agent download. And this is where you can find the .msi file to download the agent. This would, again, only download the agent for the patch manager and would not download the RMM tool. As we review through the RMM tool, we give you options there to download both the RMM and Patch Manager software at the same time, and that is our recommended uh, method. Uh, however, again, you can go to your name dropdown, choose the agent download, and from there, receive the download links and instructions. So let me go back to the dashboard view here and pull up all the pertinent information for customer enterprise. Uh, once again, this is pulling real-time system information. Uh, while we are working on making this an even faster and more robust system, uh, sometimes we do run into this. But again, it is better to have real-time information than incorrect information. So as you can see for this particular customer here, we have quite a few updates that are available. Uh, looks like 552 updates by OS. You can click on this and see them individually. Same thing with the custom and the one pending. As you can see, we have applications available by OS and by severity. We have the total, the top five patches that are needed, as well as the latest patches available. And again, we have an operations view which shows the operations that have currently been run, by whom, and their success rate. 
Here is a nice graphical representation, too, of the number of applications uh, that have patches, as well as the time rollout. So now that we've explored the dashboard view, and as you can see, many of these are pulled into the overall dashboard view on the Komodo One, let's move on into the agents. So once you've installed a piece of software on the endpoint, that computer is now going to become an agent. And now you can see these are the current ones that we're monitoring for this particular company. It gives you information about the endpoint operating system, any updates or vulnerabilities, as well as the last updated information. From here, you can click on and drill even further down into the agent. Why don't I pick an agent here that's actually up? Just like the RMM tool, if an endpoint is logged off the network, completely powered down, we're not going to see it. We're not going to be able to access it. We see basically the footprint. So let me go ahead and access this endpoint here, which is available and running. So you can see we get some system information here, uh, including some main information, network, HDD, CPU, and graphical. Coming down here, you can see the number of applications again that had patches, as well as any operations performed specifically on this endpoint and when. Finally, you also have a breakdown of all the patches that are currently available for this particular endpoint. We have that by either the software inventory, OS, or custom. So, for example, you can see we have Internet Explorer, Windows 7 over here. Um, we have 248 records. Uh, this is going to include some third parties uh, like Adobe and even some applications such as Facebook. You would simply go to here. You can see the, uh, the policies. Click on the ones that you'd like to install and simply click Submit and this will both uninstall or install the policy. You can also sort this based on severity and you can also click on each individual update for more information about that update. So let's go over here to the applications. That's just the next menu item over and as you can see this as I mentioned we have quite a few this 552 available in total for this particular customer. As you saw when we drilled into the one endpoint, there was only 220 available. So this application view is going to be what's available for your entire company. This also gives you the feature here to auto-approve. If you simply click on the little check, the little thumbs up or thumbs down button here, as soon as you give it a thumbs up, this means that you have auto-approved this plugin. We can then set it to run later on and apply to multiple endpoints just based on the fact that you have already approved it. Moving over to tags, tags is how we can identify the variety of endpoints on your system. Every endpoint can have an unlimited number of tags. So, for example, you could tag it based on the company. You could tag it based on the OS. As you can see here, we have some set up for Windows 7, Windows 8. Or you can tag it based on department. Call it accounting department. So any tag that you can create, you can assign to the endpoint. Well, why are tags important? When it comes to creating policy and operation. The tags are very important to use to select the endpoints. For example, let me go over here and select the at policy. Simply give it a policy name. Let's call it install all criticals. We're going to do this as an installation type. Here you see you can choose on any severity. In this case, let's just do the critical ones. This is going to be critical OS updates. You can, again, this is also how you would run your custom as well. And this is finally where you can add on repeat. 
if this is a one-time install or do you want to do this every day, every week, every month? And on every month here, you can select the time that you would like to run this on. So, for example, at one, at two o'clock in the morning, every tenth of the month, we can inst we can have this policy run. Now, I mentioned the tags, and as you can see, you can apply this policy on either tags or agents. Agents is going to provide you with an exhaustive list of all the endpoints that you're monitoring. As this could become tedious, that is why we introduced the tags. So if you select the tags, as you can see, you can select either all, and that would select all endpoints as well, anything that's been tagged, or just the tags that you can set up. And again, you can select multiple tags. Finally, I mentioned before uh, the thumbs up for installed only approved applications. That's when you can use this as well. You would simply click this and only pre-approved applications would be installed. Save this and now you'd have the job name appear in here. You would then get the next run date as well if this was a setup for multiple runs. The operations tab shows you all the operations that have currently been created, ran, and the success. So for example, you can simply click on it and see exactly here on this one. Oh, I think I went too far. My apologies. Let me click on that, and as you can see, here is the endpoint waiting for the agent, meaning this is most likely offline. We can go to here and see here's the endpoint, and it's 100% complete. If there was multiple endpoints, we would see them as well. Finally, I just want to quickly review uh, some of the reports that we offer. Uh, reporting is one of our most requested features. Um, we are working on reporting out of the RMM tool. Um, as you can see, we've slowly been adding more information features. Uh, we are going to be working on the reporting now, uh, and it is on the roadmap for future releases. Uh, some of the reports available Right now are the OS report, which displays the details of each operating system. Again, this is all based upon the company you have selected up here. So it's going to give you the endpoint, machine type, OS name, and even if it's a 64 or 32-bit. Network information is going to display the networks to which the endpoints are connected. This should include the MAC and IP address as well. Memory will give you the RAM mounted on each endpoint and the current usage statistics. The HDD will give you the hard disk drive and the current usage statistics. CPU is based on in percentage, and this is by user-initiated and system-initiated processes. Hardware is going to give you the basic hardware components, again, like the HDD, CPU, display, and RAM. This is just in a bit more of a robust format. Policies will display the automated and scheduled policies active for this particular company. As you can see here, we have uh, quite a few that have been run. And finally, the global patch list. This is an exhausted list of available OS patches and updates and details of the endpoints affected. So again, we had 552 updates available. By going to the global patch list, you can see the severity, where they're missing, and where they're installed. So let me go back here to the Komodo One platform. And that is basically the rundown for the patch manager and the RMM. Again, on future on future presentations, we will review the service desk, which is our ticketing system, and also we will get into the device manager. Now I want to open the floor to, uh, to back to Tom and see what questions we have. Thank you, Nicole. Appreciate that. And uh, we'll take a look at some questions that came in. 
So the first question that came in is, uh, can I use my own cloud to uh, to use uh, Komodo RMM? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by your own cloud. Um, the Komodo One platform um, generally, you know, it does run on a cloud. However, the console runs on the on your uh, system. So I'm not. If you could clarify, perhaps, what you mean by your own cloud. Okay, and we'll get back into. We'll have somebody follow up uh, with you on that question. If it's uh, regarding other uh, uh, cloud serv service providers like Amazon, uh, the answer is no at this point. Uh, these modules work uh, exclusively on the Komodo cloud, the Komodo One cloud. Okay. Um, second question: Do you offer white label branding? Can I get the end agents with my business information logs? Well, for branding right now in the service desk, uh, we offer you a branded URL that you can give your customers uh, so that when they open a ticket, they will see your branded information. Um, other than that, we don't really have self-branding. We are not really uh, meant for a customer um, viewing. This is really to manage them. Okay, great. Does the patching cover third-party application updates? Example, Java or Ac Acrobat? Yes. Um, yes, it does cover many popular third-party updates. Um, if there is a third-party that we haven't included, um, we're always, again, open to requests, and that's something that we can um, shoot to the top of the list and get that added for you. Great, great. Next question, in the current version, what does the disk cleaner and registry cleaner do? Pretty uh, much self-explanatory. The, uh, the register cleaner is a basic register cleaner, and the disk cleaner is just a very, very basic disk cleaner tool. Um, I didn't review them because they're not anything different than our competitors or anything that you would find on the market, uh, but including them where we have including them is for ease of use and efficient remediation of the issue. Okay, great, thanks. The second part to that question is the health files show, tempor show quote, temporary files, trash, old backups and web caches and local shared objects. And log files or any other trance uh, or trace uh, but it doesn't seem to clear all all that out including the web caches is that true uh, actually that is something we're going to follow up on it does include many of the hidden and temporary files because that is a lot of times you do need to look at those because malware and other issues can be hiding in them um, but we will need to double check on if they're cleared out. They should be, however, if you go in and manipulate it directly. Great, great. All right, next question. Can you remove a patch once it's installed? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you go into the if you can go into the individual endpoint and select on it, and there is actually an install or an uninstall option. Great. Okay. Uh, next question. Are the service desk and uh, device management modules also free to use? Um, the, the, the free modules are the RMM, the patch management, and the service desk. Uh, the, uh, the, the Komodo device manager has a free trial uh, for endpoint security. The mobile device uh, uh, functionality is free and always will be free on CDM. So again, this is these core components are a way of uh, you know familiarizing uh, yourselves with, um, with with our existing uh, product suites, and uh, you know hopefully to get uh, you familiar with the leading cloud-based SaaS technology. So that's why we're offering some of these for free. So uh, if you want to check out uh, Komodo Device Management further, the uh, the URL is dm.komodo.com. And the, um, the, the offers are on there, on, on the website toward the bottom. Next question, uh, how do you remote access the system? Um, how do you remote access the system? A system. 
yeah. a system. Okay, I, I think what you're referring to is taking over an endpoint. Um, through the RMM console, so not through the web, this is through the downloaded console. Um, that you download it again to a computer um, that is on your network. You would simply go to the devices view, select the endpoint you want, go to where it says take over, and this will now initiate a session. Oh, and I clicked on it way too fast here. But this has now initiated a session with this endpoint, so you have remoted into it, as it were. And this is where you can then launch the deploy tools uh, and remediate the issues. I think that's what you're referring to. Okay, great, great. Um, again, after this call, if, you're, if your questions weren't answered, we're actually going to have um, uh, some folks on the support team uh, uh, contact you for follow-up to see if all your questions were answered. So uh, next question, is uh, is there a way to add a new site location from a web-based interface? Through the web-based interface, no. Um, the web-based in interface is where you would only add in a company. Uh, it is through the console itself uh, that you would, you can manage the sites and this is where you would add on a site or edit or delete. Okay. Does the RMM console update uh, on its own or how can you tell you have the latest version uh, that you might have to upgrade to? Actually that's an excellent question um, which I do not have the answer for so we will definitely make sure to get back with you on that one. I believe it automatically updates and, but I don't want to, I'd like to confirm that before I, I push that out. Great. Okay. How do you deploy patches to a computer using RMM tool? Or do you have to do it through the online app only? Um, if you have access to the patch, I mean, just like any, any procedure, you can create a procedure to deploy it okay. um, using our scripting wizard if you had the particular installation specifics. Okay. Will alerts be sent to the client's account in the service desk? Uh, no. What you can do is um, alerts are sent to the service desk. From there, you would configure how you would like it sent out. So you can have nothing done. You can have a ticket opened uh, and so on and so forth. And then you would choose within each company who gets that ticket. So who is the account manager? Who is responsible for that? Within each company and service desk, you can granularly uh, configure this information. Okay. Does the uh, RMM and patch manager work uh, for both Windows and Mac computers? Uh, we don't work on Mac computers at this time, uh, but we do work on Windows. Okay. What are the configurations or setting changes that need to be done on our own equipment to allow patches to be pushed? You shouldn't have to make, once the uh, endpoint is recognized by the patch manager system, uh, you should not have to make uh, any other further changes um, unless perhaps you have a particularly robust firewall and you need to allow, uh, create a couple exceptions for the Komodo one itself. Okay. Does the patch management module also push out third-party updates? Yes, it does. Uh, and again, if you don't see any third parties, um, your particular third party on the list, um, please go to the forum and request it, and we can get uh, get that added in for you. Okay, great. And can patch management policies be amended? Um, the policies that can be invented are the ones that we actually reviewed in that it's going to be a recurring um, policy, a basically a recurring installation policy or one time. You would simply go to policy, add a policy, and again, this is where you can select the installation type. Uh, you can install the patches based on severity or pre-approval. Um, you can also do it based on custom or just OS, and you can make this a one-time or a repeatable. Okay, here's a question. I 
don't know if this is clear, but what's the major differences between the desktop application and the web-based application? Hey, I'm, I know you're referring to the RMM because Patch Manager and the Service Desk are, uh, well, the Service Desk is 100% is on the cloud. The Patch Management is, let's say, 90% because there is that small bit of software that has to go to each endpoint. It's the RMM tool that, that does confuse people the most, and that's because of the three components. So the first component, which is the web-based view, allows you to apply a policy, but it doesn't allow you to create it. It allows you to view an alert, but you can't really do anything with it. Um, it allows you again to view devices and view system information, but you can't actually take them over and initiate a troubleshooting session with them. That is all through the console. So basically the console is the heavy lifting and the web-based view is just your basic information and the ability to add in just a, a singular device if you'd like. Okay, great. Does the RMM platform uh, generate reports that we could show to our clients? Not right now. However, that is one of the more popular future requests and that is on the roadmap for future releases. Okay. Uh, what about uh, antivirus software integration? Uh, we are working on that. Now, within the uh, CDM, we do have um, some antivirus um, there. Um, however, we are looking at integrating our own antivi antivirus products. And when available, you'll see them within the App Store. You would simply add them from here, and they'd be available in your modules list. Okay. Other than RDP Connect, do you have a way to interact with the user desktop? With the user's desktop, no, we do not. That is going to be the RDP. Um, however, when you are doing a lot of troubleshooting, things like the shell execute um, are, are really what you're going to be using more. Um, but if you want to take over the desktop, the, the RDP is, is going to be what you're going to use. Great. What about serial numbers, hardware serial numbers? There is uh, some information, and again, that has also been a very popular request. When we first started this in April, while well, we didn't even have this information, through the web view of the RMM tool, you can see we have started, um, we do have some information. Let me go to one that's available here. Um, so, for example, let's see if I can pull some. Uh, serial numbers have started being included. Um, Memory slot information is included. Uh, yes, this is updating here, but again, we're pulling real-time information, including things like um, key numbers and serial numbers. Uh, if you're currently not seeing information that you'd like, again, please make it a future request. And we're more than happy to evaluate it and add it on the roadmap for future releases. Okay, next question. Can the alerts or will the alerts be sent to the agents or the company's emails? No, not at all. Uh, alerts right now are configured to be to be viewed, and you can send them to the service desk. And through the service desk, you can decide how would you like those distributed. Um, but as far as transparency goes, there is nothing on the endpoint or the company that will see any issues unless you tell them. Okay, great. Next question. What about the PCA? Where can we see a demo of that trial? Um, because of the uh, the amount of information that we're conveying in these webinars, we uh, we're focusing in on uh, uh, just several modules at a time. Uh, the service desk will be. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll discuss that in in a future webinar. And we'll send that details as well. In addition, uh, if you go to the Komodo uh, dot TV site. We actually have a pre-recorded webinar on that site already uh, where you could uh, see the details about integrating and uh, downloading and deploying and managing the service desk as well. So, uh, But we will notify you of, um, of future webinars on service desk and, and other modules too, the Komodo Device Manager, the Application Store, the new uh, next generation uh, security uh, information event management 
uh, tool, which uh, the webinar for that will be on October 1st, and we'll send out invitations for that as well. Um, what about adding new customers to the RMM? Are they added or as as a new company or as a new site under under my own company? You would basically add them on the Komodo one on starting out as a new company. Once you have the company added, you can then, once added, then through the console add add a, a site. So let me pull up pull up the console here a little bit more and go back to our devices. But the company itself is going to be set up in the main console and that's so that all the modules have access to it. The site, however, is going to be set up through the console on managing sites. So once you have the company in the site, you can do some very easy tree sorting. Okay. Does, uh, the, does password, um, can the password be saved automatically for login, <clears throat> for logging in when connecting uh, remotely? Uh, no, the way that the RDP works, um, unfortunately, you, you saw when I logged into the one that was already logged out. Um, since it's logged out, you would need to have that information in order to log in. Okay, great. Unless you want to log in, of course, as the administrator. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, um, okay, so I see, uh, I see on system inventory. Uh, the serial number, the product number, and the warranty link on the list, but uh, which shows not available. Is this to be added, or is this something that we need to do with the console uh, to get this information? Okay. If you see unavailable, that's because the endpoint itself is either offline or powered down, which means it cannot pull current information from it. So you'll get some information. Um, however, it's not going to be everything uh, because it can't pull the real-time information that it wants. Um, so it should be all information that's available, especially if you have one that's the status available, is what is currently available through the system inventory. If it says updating like my last one did, it just takes a few moments perhaps to get the information, but then it will repopulate again with the current information. Okay, great. All right, we have time for one uh, last question, and and again, the uh, the questions that have gone unanswered, we'll follow up with you shortly after this webinar. Uh, this last one's pretty good. Once the uh, once the pass, patch module has been installed, does it disable the standard Microsoft Windows updates? Good question. No, uh, the uh, the two are completely unrelated. So when you are configuring, you're going to want to go in and and either run something through the RMM um, or, or through your policy to automatically disable the Windows updates. Um, you know, it, just, it really depends upon how you're managing um, your, you know, your MSPs. Okay, terrific. All right. Well, well thanks, Nicole. And, um, you know, we hope that this webinar has been helpful in furthering your understanding of the, of the platform, the cloud platform, and learning how to, uh, to basically manage these two modules that were discussed today. And uh, we encourage you to register and activate all your managed devices on Komodo One and suspect that you would join the others uh, of enterprises and MSPs who have had success with these tools. Uh, if I can one, launch one last uh, polling question, this will help uh, for follow-up. And uh, here is the polling question. Mm -hmm. ah, very good. Okay. Okay, great. We'll uh, we'll close that poll, and uh, again, as a final reminder, <laughs> we have a new product launch coming out, and we have a new webinar to discuss the product launch, uh, to discuss uh, Komodo's uh, uh, Nexim solution, and we hope to see you on October first. Have a great day, everyone.